In the U.S., five of the largest weapons manufacturing contractors spent a combined $60 million in 2020 to influence policy, according to a report from the Center of Responsive Politics. These contractors are Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, and Raytheon. Recently, a former board member from Raytheon was appointed as the new Secretary of War, sometimes referred to as the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin. Austin is also a retired four-star general of the U.S. Army. His career is a prime example of the revolving door between the Pentagon, the weapons industry, and the state. This revolving door, along with the financial contributions towards political parties and candidates, blurs the line between industry and government and is a concrete example of the military-industrial-congressional complex. In 2018, the CIPRI Top 100 Arms Producing Companies report placed Raytheon as the fourth largest arms producing corporation in the world. During the elections of 2020, Raytheon contributed over $4 million towards lobbying efforts to both major political parties, the Republicans and Democrats. We should keep in mind that both major political parties vote overwhelmingly in favor of an increased military budget year in and year out. The Global Network has consistently opposed Raytheon's operations. In 2011, the Global Network held our 19th annual Space Organizing Conference in Andover, Massachusetts. The conference was titled, Raytheon, Missile Offense, and Endless War, Working Together to Demilitarize and Create a Sustainable Future. Raytheon operates a facility in the town of Andover, located in Essex County, About 4,500 people work at the Andover facility where they build missile defense systems like the PAC-3 ground-based launchers and the SM-3 Aegis destroyer-based interceptor missiles that are now being deployed near the borders of Russia and China. Peace organizations stand in solidarity with annual protests during the Keep Space for Peace Week at Raytheon facilities across the country, including Tucson, Arizona. Recently, Raytheon has been constructing a new facility in Asheville, North Carolina, under their subsidiary company, Pratt & Whitney. This massive facility will produce F-35 jet engines and is currently being constructed despite public outrage. Local organizations have held various and creative actions to oppose Raytheon, One campaign is the Reject Raytheon Asheville campaign, which has united several local and national organizations in opposition against Raytheon, exposing the corporation's true costs of seeking profits. The local communities of Asheville are being exposed to their connection to the innocent deaths in Yemen, where Raytheon products are unleashed in an illegal and immoral war. Not only are weapons made from Raytheon destroying parts of the world like Yemen, but the new construction building is taking away $26 million of taxpayer money from the communities of Asheville. The environment is also being destroyed to construct the new facility, and the military-industrial congressional complex is being expanded regardless of public opinion or opposition. Here's a short statement from the Reject Raytheon campaign posted on their website. The U.S. military-industrial complex is also one of the largest contributors to climate change, and Raytheon itself is known for having a poor environmental record. It has a reputation for buying companies with a history of polluting and pretending to clean them up while simply allowing the pollution to continue. From coast to coast, factories affiliated with Raytheon have left polluted areas that will take decades to restore. By 2008, Raytheon had already been the subject of over 90 lawsuits for tainted soil and water. The worst part? The corporation doesn't seem to care at all. It has been fined repeatedly and in multiple instances, the EPA has had to force it to comply with cleaning up the polluted soil and water. In Arizona, a facility that Raytheon was supposed to be in the process of cleaning up sent cancer-causing chemicals into groundwater, impacting over 50,000 people. In 1995, they bought 
E-Systems in St. Petersburg, Florida. This factory was a known polluter and Raytheon allowed the problem to worsen until 1999. The Pratt & Whitney plant is being touted as a job creator that will help the economy and be built with environmental concerns in mind. The question is, at what cost? Are 600 to 800 jobs worth it? With the current economy favoring the military-industrial complex over civilian air travel, our community will be contributing to war worldwide. War Profiteers has been an integral part of our nation's economy for years, and Raytheon is among the worst. The question you must ask yourself is, is it worth it? Now, with a former Raytheon board member in the seat of one of the most powerful positions, the Secretary of War, the control of the U.S. government by corporations is growing only stronger. The global network stands with the people and for peace against a corrupt political and economic power, which has only one interest, to make more money at whatever cost.